I know I'm not looking at you. It's because I used to have a mirror that would sit right there and I broke it. It's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. It's my fault. What am I talking about? Okay. I'm in two minds because I want to talk about love. So what I used to think love was, I wasn't a big fan of that. But now what I understand love to be, I love it. I just kind of wanted to share my thoughts. While I do it, I'm also going to practice my work for you. So you know this, um, <laughs> this foundation that I made a whole video about, planning about, because it was green. Yeah, I figured out how to use it. I'm going to show you now. You know what, I'm like with numbers. So I want this up tomorrow, which is the 10th, so that I can make it for the 10, 11, 2020. And then I want another one up for the 11th, so I can have the 11, 11, 2020. And I would also like, if this video could be 10 second, 10 minutes and 10 seconds long and the next one be 11 minutes and 11 seconds long and then after that I'm going to work on getting over this numbers thing because it's killing me and it's cool so all of that is besides the point we're talking about love so love as I used to understand it based on like books tv movies society like music love is like a feeling like it's not something that you can control it just happens and to me that's you know irrational i'm a problem solver and in order for me to solve a problem i need to understand the inputs i need to know what's going on with love my problem was that in the bible jesus tells us to love everybody now from the way that i understood love you can't just do that with anybody like something that is irrational or like uncontrollable it's not like you chose to love them like you just love them because you have to like it's ingrained in you, you just do because you know love happens but when jesus is telling us to love everybody it's like how am i supposed to do something that just happens to a select few with everybody like wasn't connected. I don't like having unsolved problems. Like, what is it keeps me up at night? So for a really long time, I was just like, how? Like, I don't think God is going to tell us to do something that is not possible to do. So I went back to the source and I was like, God, I'm going to need you to teach me what love is. I need you to help me out here. But look, I feel like you really want me to do this thing. Like, this is important to you. And if it's important to you, like, I want to do it. He could have just compelled me to do it. Like, he could have created me just automatically loving him, choosing him, submitting to him, just everything. But he didn't. He gave me a choice. So I feel like he wants me to choose to partner with him. And in order for me to do it, I need to understand it. And I just, I wasn't getting it. I was just like, it doesn't make sense. How can I make butterflies in my stomach for everybody? How can I make this intense, like, I want to love you for the rest of my life? with everybody like how so i was praying 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 i was like god like i need you to teach me please teach me god teach me i prayed about that like maybe a month maybe more straight that's a problem that's a problem to me because the way that i see god or like the way that i'm set up with god i feel like he hears me the f he hears <laughs> he hears me the first time uh like our track record has shown that he hears me before i even pray like he already knows and more time, he's already made a way. And I think, oh, awesome, you've answered my prayer. He's already done it. Like, it's not because I prayed it, that he'd already done it. I just, you was not aware. So I prayed about it for a long time. Then eventually one day I, I snapped out of that spirit of repetitive prayer. And again, I'm not speaking against everything I'm saying. It's just where I'm at. I'm not speaking against repetitive prayer because I know that's a big thing for a lot of people. It just didn't feel right that I was praying for a really long time. So I took a step back and I said, okay, let me know what's going on here. Good. The good thing about God is we know that he's constant, he's constant and he's faithful. So if you see yourself in like a weird situation, things aren't adding up, it's not God, it's you. The situation, it was definitely me. So I looked at what I was doing and I realised I was praying, definitely, and I really did want this thing, but I had an expectation about how I wanted the result to be, which is really ironic because again, this is confirmation bias in action it's ironic because i'm using the foundation that i was complaining about in confirmation bias but anyways it's funny how like things come full circle um and i was expecting god to answer in a particular way i just wanted him to download the information into my mind while i was asleep and then i'd wake up and say oh yeah sweet 
and then I'll go out and I'll love people like the exact correct way, like the way that it is in the specification, not like my own made up homemade DIY type of blog. Moving on. So <laughs> I wanted him to download it in my sleep. And obviously we all know that's not how anybody learns anything. If you want somebody to learn something, you have to let them do it. Like you have to actually teach them. You have to like show them, give them examples, like let them experience what it is to do the thing. You can't do it for them. And I feel like God knows this too. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I didn't wake up just suddenly knowing how to love. But when I stepped back and I reassessed the, set, set, the situation and I realized that, um, what's the word, confirmation bias in terms of my result, I had a confirmation bias. I realized like I wasn't open to the ways that God might actually be doing it. I, I said, okay, cool, I'm the issue. So I'm gonna like try and no, what's the word? I'm gonna stop looking for answers in a specific way and I'm just gonna be open to however God wants to do it. So I was just like, God, show me the ways, the doors that you've opened, the ways that you've made. And he did, like straight away. Something took me to the Bible as I was reading the Bible. Um, I know I was in like a random section and I don't really know how I got into 1 Corinthians 13, but that's where I really learned about it. The whole entire Bible, in my opinion, is the definition of love. Like everything that you see there is a declaration, it's a demonstration, it is a revelation of love. Which is funny because, again, when I was learning about this topic, what is love? I'm a Googler, I research everything. So I put it into Google and I was like, okay, in a biblical sense, what is love? And it'll be like, God is love. It's like, okay, yeah, but cool, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? Because I get it, but Jesus is telling me to go and do the love. So how do I do the God? And now it makes sense. Like, how do you do, like, being Christ-like? I mean, Jesus, God, what am I saying? So that's how we do the God. That's how we love people. But at the time, it wasn't clicking, okay? So how did I get here? <laughs> oh, the tangents. Really sorry, I don't know where I was. I'm just going to pick up where I think I was. Cool, long story short, I ended up, in 1 Corinthians 13 and I don't know why but for some reason that day when I read it I feel like the the words went from my eyes to my brain right up in there I was like bro first thing I noticed all of these things are doing things these are things that we do so it's like love doesn't just happen like love is not outside of us and it's just a thing that happens and like maybe we crash into the love the love is like from within it comes out they're not outside you don't go outside and like meet forgiveness for it to be genuine it has to be cut it has to come and be complete inside of you like when you forgive somebody it can't be i'm forgiving you because you said sorry because i don't think that's true forgiveness like if that person hadn't said sorry you would have forgiven them that was really freeing for me and the reason it was freeing for me because it's like, now that I know that love is based on me, I don't have to wait to meet like the perfect person. I don't have to wait for somebody to apologize to me. I don't have to wait to be in a good mood. Like everything just comes from me. It's beautiful because I am the only variable that I can control. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's where I'm at. I mean, there's a lot more to talk about. Maybe we'll talk about it another time. But I feel like this is a good place to end it because we've been talking for 22 minutes. And I'm just thinking to myself, how am I going to get this down to 10 minutes and 10 seconds? Now that I've spoken about what love means to me, and um, I've touched on the fact that it is entirely like within me, like the, the amount that I'm able to love or the people that I'm able to love is entirely determined by me and like my ability to love but my ability like i can love limitlessly but then um whether i do or whether i don't entirely depends on me and whether i do or whether i don't like i feel like i'm going around in circles with this sentence but basically that's where i'm at so i feel like love is a series of actions and choices that we make and it's entirely um up to us and yeah sometimes outside variables can make it harder sometimes people don't make it easy but it's still up to us like we, we can still we can choose to allow like the actions behaviors whatever of others to limit our love or we can choose to say do you know what screw it i don't care i don't care what you're doing i don't care what you're gonna do I don't care what you said i am choosing to love you i'm choosing to be kind i'm choosing to forgive it's up to us
I love that. Personally, that works for me because now it's like, okay, cool, Jesus, I can do what you told me to do. Cool, I'm going to end it here because I keep saying I'm going to end it here, but I'm actually going to end it here. And then I'm going to talk about the rest of the other stuff for the next video. But I'm going to do it now, but you're going to see it tomorrow because 11-11. <laughs>